welcome back to Nightline. We're so glad you stayed with us. We're, um, I want to read something to you. It is what someone called in. And it's a lady who says she is so thankful for the prayer line and that it's available for her to call. She said that the prayer line has blessed her life for so many years. And she appreciates the volunteers and the workers. She's really thankful. And you know, that is a wonderful thing that these prayer partners give of themselves to other people. And they'll be praying with you. If you call in, they will be happy to pray with you. And all of that, they, they love you. And they are available. They are available right now. But right now, too, we're going to hear another song from Joshua Hawkins. It is well with my soul. It is 
Thank you for another great song, Joshua. Is it well with your soul tonight? I'm not asking you, are your finances perfect? Is your family perfect? Is your whole life perfect? I'm asking you, is it well with your soul? That's the most important thing in our lives is to make sure that it's well with our soul, that we are at peace with God because Jesus came to bring us together to make peace between God and man. It's up to us to accept it or not. If it's not well with your soul, it can be before the night's over. Right. We have Reverend Terry Bailey, and I'm just going to let you, uh, like I said a while ago, pick up where we left off. <laughs> well, we're talking about visitation. Yes. We're talking about revival. And so what does that term visitation mean? And I could give a lot of scriptures of where God visits his people. If you look throughout scripture where God encounters his people, their names change, their lives change, their destinies change. Yeah. God visits us to change us. Yeah. He changes us into his image and into his likeness. The Bible said we go from glory to glory, yeah. from faith to faith. God visits us to make us more like his son. That's why we have to go through these times of brokenness. Mm -hmm. That's why we have to go through these periods where God deals with us. We, we get busy with life. We take things for granted. We take our blessings for granted. If we're not careful, we'll compare ourselves to others and we'll say, well, why is God blessing him in this way, but he's not blessing me in this way? But we don't know the whole story. We don't it's know true. the backdrop of all of that. We can't compare ourselves to others. We've got to get into his presence. Mm -hmm. And let the door do in us what he desires to do so that we will be like Jesus. I believe this last day revival is going to be a faceless, no-name revival. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be about some great evangelist. Yeah. I believe people are going to come under the tents and they're going to come to our churches and they're going to come to the places where we're ministering. And they're going to say, you know, I can't remember that preacher's name, but man, I saw Jesus there. I met Jesus mm -hmm. there. I don't remember who sang or who <laughs> preached but I saw Jesus in that place. Mm -hmm. That's the key. So what is visitation? The word visitation could mean to heal because God comes as a doctor. Psalms 41.1, I said, Lord, be merciful to me. Heal my soul for I've sinned against you. The word visitation could mean to adjust because God comes as a chiropractor. <laughs> if you've ever been to the chiropractor, they'll adjust you, make things come into alignment. Uh, Proverbs 3.12, for whom the Lord loves, he corrects just as a father, the son, in whom he delights. The word visitation could mean to make a deposit because God comes as the wise investor. Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. So what is the necessity or the purpose of visitation? Well, first off, there's a time of visitation. There's a time when God comes. I like what this quote says here by G. Uh, Morgan, G. Campbell Morgan, one of the great preachers of old, he said, revival cannot be organized, but we can set ourselves to catch the wind from heaven when God chooses to blow upon his people once again. Yeah. The kingdom of God's not going to advance by our churches becoming filled with men, but by men in our churches becoming filled with God. Revival is the people of God living in the power of an ungrieved, unquenchable spirit. Mm -hmm. I believe that God wants to visit us, and when he visits us, miraculous things happen. Blessings take place. I'm telling you, when Jesus moved among the people, tremendous blessings fell on those whom he came in contact with. Did you know Jesus couldn't go to a funeral? He messed up the funerals. <laughs> you remember the widow of Nain and <laughs> yeah. the mourners? And Jesus raised him up from the dead. <laughs> I've often wondered, did the funeral director, was he able to collect on that funeral service. <laughs> <laughs> Miracles, deliverances, resurrections because of his presence. There we go, in his presence. Mm -hmm. Everything we need is in the presence of God. Yes. And if we can just get into his presence, I've found mm -hmm. that when I face adversity and I face them, when I face difficulties, when I don't know what to do, if I can get in his presence, I can find an answer. Mm -hmm. I can find a solution. Right. I can find the breakthrough because it's in his presence. And when we're faithful and we're consistent 
it produces surprise visitation. One of the things the Lord said to me this year, he said, this will be a year of divine retribution. He said, I've, I, he keeps records. He knows what's going on. He knows about the corruption and the evil and the wickedness is in our yeah. society. He knows what's going on behind closed doors and he's going to deal with it. Suddenly, all of a sudden, you're going to see it. You're going to think, wow, that came out of nowhere. Wow, what was that? Then he said this would be a year of removal. People are going to get removed from things when they get exposed. So God's doing those things suddenly. But suddenly God's just going to show up. A couple of Sundays ago I had a message prepared to preach on impartation. And I wanted to preach it. I was ready to preach it. I was kind of like the racehorse at the gate getting ready. And the Spirit of God swept into our service that day. It's one of the greatest services that I've been in and I can't tell you when. It was a true spirit of revival. People just started streaming to the front, praying, crying out to God. And we just started ministering and praying and worshiping. Mm -hmm. And the Lord did some marvelous things around that altar that day. Mm -hmm. What was that? That was a suddenly, suddenly. The Bible said on the day of Pentecost, suddenly the wind began to blow. Suddenly God began to show up. So when we're faithful and we're consistent, we're doing what God's called us to do. I believe God will show up. And here's a scripture I love. Visitation secures our inheritance. Job chapter 10, verse 12. Thou hast granted me life and favor, and thy visitation has preserved my spirit. We have to have these visitations of the Lord. Yeah. You know, when my grandparents were living, and I would go several weeks and not go by to see them, they would let me know, we haven't seen you, we want to see you. A phone call was okay, but that wasn't good enough. Yeah. They wanted to put their eyes on me. They wanted to see me. And they would let me know, we haven't seen you in a little while. And I'd have to make an effort to change my schedule and go by and see my grandparents. And I'm thankful that I did. They wanted that. We need those visitations of the Father. We need those visitations of the Lord. It don't happen every day. It don't happen every time we come together in church. But God wants to visit us and secure our inheritance. And I found this quote. When visitation comes, God always releases some type of strategic information that thrusts us forward in his purposes. Wow. And then visitation produces glory. The true manifest presence of God cannot visit humanity without his glory radiating from that presence. God visits us to bring us into a new day and to initiate a new season in our lives. Things change. This, we can't do everything the same as we've always done them. Mm -hmm. And we need a fresh wind of heaven to come. Mm -hmm. When we were in Washington, D.C., I've driven into Washington, D.C. many, many times through the years. I lived in Baltimore for 13 years with my family and pastor to church there. I can't tell you the hundreds of times I've been to D.C. My daughter lived and went to school in D.C. And when we were driving in the night before we were to pray, they had told uh, me, said, you guys be in charge of Washington because you know the lay of the land. Yeah. And one of the ladies in our group had had a word from the Lord about the Liberty Bell. And there's a replica of the Liberty Bell right in front of Union Station that kind of looks over to the Supreme Court and is at the back of the Capitol. And I said, that's the place where we're going to pray. And as I was driving in that night, and I've driven into Washington many times, I just started weeping. And I said, Lord, what is this? He said, I'm showing you my heart for this city. I have never wept over Washington. I've mm -hmm. prayed for Washington. But that night I wept. That day we gathered, we worshiped, we prayed. One of the ladies out on the edge of the group led one gentleman to the Lord right there at Union Station, <laughs> right behind the Capitol. You might say the way the Capitol acts and the way they, I wonder if God's anywhere near that place sometimes. Mm -hmm. But it was hot, it was humid, and it was stifling. It was in July. Oh, wow. And I stood up there and I began to prophesy about a fresh wind from heaven blowing over that city and all of a sudden the wind started to blow and the leader of our group was one of our missionaries and his 
children had been in D.C. all week on vacation and came and met us. They said, we've been here all week. There hadn't been one breeze. We hadn't felt the wind blow one time. It's been mm -hmm. hot. It's been stifling. But let me tell you, the wind began to blow that day over that city. Mm -hmm. Over that city. God mm -hmm. wants to blow over our city. He wants to blow over our churches. He, he wants does. to blow over us individually. And when he breathes into us, the Bible said he breathed into Adam, and he became a living soul, the breath of God. Ezekiel the prophet stood and he said, prophesy to the bones. Yeah. Then he said, prophesy to the wind. Mm -hmm. And he began to prophesy to the wind. And the wind, the breath of God, the Holy Spirit began to come and breathe new life into those dead bodies that stood erect with no life in yeah. them. God sends the wind to breathe new life into us again. And he wants to breathe that life into us. That's what visitation is all about. So my prayer is simply this. God, visit us in your glory. Visit us once again in this nation. Visit us in our churches, in our schools, in our colleges, in our universities. Wherever you are, God can visit you and he can find you and he can breathe that new life into you today. Amen. Amen. You know, wind is symbolic <laughs> of the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit comes. And um, I was I was with my grandchildren today and that a thunderstorm came up. <laughs> I know this sounds crazy, but I had made a little tent by putting the sheets over a, a table, my, my dining room table. And they were under there and they were hiding and and uh, uh, from the thunderstorm. And I just kind of got down in there with them. And I said, well, you know, Jesus is with us. And my little grandson looks around, no, he's not. This is the youngest one. No, he's not. I said, oh, yes, he is. And I told, told him what I told the older one about the wind. You know, you may not see it but he's there yes. the wind's there and so is our god he is with us Amen. Yes. and i'm just i just pray more and more that the wind of god's spirit would begin to blow i want him blowing in me hmm. and you know and to blow into everybody around us joshua hawkins is going to sing for us again precious blood Until one spotless lamb in the form of a man gave his life on Calvary. His was the only blood that could ever set me free. For his blood was not just blood of a Another spotless lamb for his blood was precious blood for it washed the sin of man and his blood it heals my body and it sets my spirit free oh I'm so glad his precious blood still flows from Calvary. No other blood could heal my broken body. And no other blood 
could save my sin sick soul and no other blood could conquer death or win the victory no other blood but the blood Jesus shed for me for his blood was not just blood of another spotless lamb for his blood was precious blood for it washed the sin of man and his blood it heals my body and it sets my spirit free oh i'm so glad his precious blood still flows from spirit free oh i'm so glad his precious blood yes i'm so glad his precious blood let me tell you that i'm so glad his precious blood still flows Thank you so much, Joshua. The precious blood of Jesus Christ flowed from Calvary for you and for me. I am so thankful that he has given us new life. And you can have that life too. If you don't know Jesus Christ, I'm asking you now just to say, Lord, come into my heart. I'm going to repent of my sins. I'm going to turn from them. I want to be a follower of you. Please wash me and cleanse me and make me whole, make me new. And he'll do it. He'll do it. Amen. And you will be whole. You will be new. Allow the Spirit of God to just come in and change your life right now, tonight, right where you are this very minute. Right this very minute. Oh, he loves you so much. <laughs> he loves you so very much. And we want to pray for you. We want to pray over these, um, these requests. There are so many. Those who, are, who just really need a touch from God. And we're going to pray over those right now. Father, we just yes, ask that you would Jesus. move, Lord, among each Thank one you, of Lord. these requests. Lord, you Amen. see every heart. You Touch. see every body that needs healing. Touch. You see every person, Lord, that's represented Touch. here. We pray Touch. that your Holy Spirit would move, Amen. God, Amen. that you Touch. would move in hearts, that Touch. you would Amen. move in bodies, raise them up in the name of Jesus. Amen. God, by your mighty power, we pray Amen. that you would do it. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, God. Thank you and we give you praise because we know that you hear and answer prayer. Yes. We have a, another lady who just wants to thank the prayer line for being such a great blessing for her life. You know, sometimes they're behind the scenes people who are more important than those of us who are seen. And that's just a fact. And I'm thankful for them too. Amen. But there's been several who've said they're so thankful. And a lady also who has said she was so thankful for all the work that Greta Campbell did here in this place. And I stay in touch with her and Pat. They're precious people, precious people of God. And I'm thankful for their, 
for their lives because they've touched mine. There's so many lives that touch us, but you know the life that touches us the most is the life of Jesus Christ and His Spirit who comes in to our hearts to change us, to renew us, to lead us in the place where we need to be, to show us what His Word means, to lead us in the path that's right. When all we have confusion all around us, to say, this is the way, walk in it. This is the way, just walk in it. And tonight, He can be your Savior. Tonight, He can be your Lord if you just allow Him into your heart, into your life. I'm so thankful for those of you who have, have been watching tonight. And I just pray that the Spirit of God would rest upon you. I pray that the blessing of God would be upon you. And if that blessing comes in the way of brokenness, recognize it for what it is. It's a blessing. We love you. And we just pray that your hearts would be restored, renewed. We pray that your hope, the Holy Spirit would work in you and in your life in a powerful way and revive you mightily. That's our prayer for you tonight. Thank you so much for joining us for Nightline. Bless you. Thank you.